Welcome to another edition of Great Health, Abundant Happiness, and Outrageous Love. Mwah. We were talking about manifesting your dream house. Yes. We, we manifested a few houses, but let's just talk about the last one. Right. And I know a lot of people use the word hooey. That is hooey. You cannot manifest your dream house. We are here to tell you that we have done this three times. Right? Three times down to minute details. I would even say yeah. four, where we're landing right now, because it's we live where people vacation. We, exactly. We talked about this forever. However, we purchased this prior to knowing that yeah. we would be living here yeah. full time. But the three homes that we purchased, we 100% manifested them. And let's just go to the last one because right. I think the story around that one will right. resonate with a lot of other people. Yeah. Let me just kind of set the story up so. Um, we lived in outside of Chicago, Lake Forest, and I took a job that landed me in Denver. Um, got promoted to a job in Denver because uh, I was working for those guys mm -hmm. when we were in Chicago. Yeah. So I got promoted to a job, went to Denver. And setting the story, we had two young yeah, two young kids. Kids in so kindergarten I, and second grade. So travel is always hard, as you guys know, but um, I was traveling just to go to the office. So in other words, on Monday morning, I would get on a plane and fly from Chicago to Denver just to go to the office. This is not mm -hmm. uh, my general travel to go around and see all the troops. I ran a big sales organization. That was a lot of travel. I'm traveling just to go to the office uh, for the week. And so, you know, I'm there for the whole week pretty much. So it's pretty painful. I wanted to get Karen and my girls out to Denver as quickly as possible. And um, it, there, was, there was a lot of stress around this. Uh, because we got to sell a house and buy a house, obviously. Um, well, I'm backing up in selling that second house, um, just like the first and the last. We sold that house the first day it went on the market. Oh, yeah, that's a whole other story, but we manifested that thing, too. I remember having an argument with the realtor that we put it on. The price was too high, and uh, we, we had an offer. I think that day we put it out there midday and the guy wanted it and he said, I want you to take it off the market. You have to waive all of your contingencies right. and Full we, got, we, got, we got the thing closed, but mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. I mean, we, we have a lot of stories around this manifestation. So Karen's absolutely right. If you think it's hooey, if you don't, don't think it works, by the way, if you think that's the case, you're right too. Exactly. Um, everybody's right. So we know that you can manifest this stuff. It's happened multiple times around buying and selling houses and everything else in our life. But the house, we were trying to buy a house in a particular neighborhood because Karen did all of her research. She's a real researcher. She'll go on and look at everything and look at it again and look at it over again. And that's School part districts. of the manifestation is to know exactly. We have to know exactly what you want. What you want. All right, that's step um, one. You know, if you say, I just, I want a house. I want a I nice don't house. Care, right. Then you'll get any house. Right. But we had two children and I really did care about the school district that they were going to be in. At that point in time, Denver was definitely not known for having um, a great school system. No, no. And I wanted to choose one of the best options that were available in a school, sy school system that wasn't great to begin with. Right. So I knew what school district I wanted to be in and that narrowed it down. Right. Um, I also had some characteristics about the house. I definitely wanted a yard. I wanted a cul-de-sac. Yes. Because I wanted our kids to be able to be outside. It's really important for me that they were able to be, you know, outside in a safe cul-de-sac yeah. in nature, especially moving from Chicago where it was so cold to Denver, this beautiful, you know, weather state. Oh yeah, it's, so, it's incredible. So yeah, we all want to be outside on a call to set because it's safer. You know, cars are not flying down the street. They, if they come down that street, they live down there, or they're coming around to look at homes in the neighborhood and they're just driving real slow looking at everything or coming right. to visit somebody. So you don't have a lot of traffic. So you're right, it was a call to sack. Um, you know, I want to go so far as to say, I think we had things written down. I think there was, uh, it was a tutor that we were looking for we, specifically. We did specifically. <laughs> I mean, uh, we're, one, we're, we, weren't, we didn't really talk about this before the video, right. but we did have some other things. Not only called a sack, it was a tutor home, right? right? You know, the tutor is. home is like the stucco and then usually the dark wood frame. You, you know what those things look like. And brick, it's a specific and house in right. brick, right? In the bottom. Stone in the exactly. Was like, right. And, um, you know, we've been very 
I want to use the word lucky, but I'm also going to be honest and say we were strategic in the first two houses that we had manifested in that location we knew was critical because we are not those people that are going to stay put all the time. So we did need to be in a location that's a top location where we could resell the house for at least, but hopefully much more than whatever it was right. that we purchased. So well, I think it's so always very smart. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. This is a great point to bring up. Whenever you buy a house, something as substantial as a house, make sure you buy it with the intention that we're going to sell this at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And we not only want to get our money out, it would be nice to make money, right? So right. you have to think that way. So first and foremost, know exactly what you want, neighborhood, what the house looks like, cul-de-sac, all that stuff. But then you also want to um, buy intelligently. Uh, you know, one of the rules of thumb we always looked at is you really want to buy like the cheapest house in the neighborhood, not the most expensive house. I mean, everybody has those neighborhoods. Like in the neighborhood that we bought into, somebody moved from across the street and built a home that was so big, everybody thought it was the um, country club for some golf course that was nearby. I'm only saying that because it's kind of funny. Like, that probably turned into close to being one of the most expensive homes in the neighborhood. It's hard to sell that house when you go to sell it. Now, I'll also say that people with lots of money, sometimes they don't care. They just want what they want right now and they don't care. I'm I just, I'm wanna just giving I want to add it. in there that it doesn't have to be people with lots of money. We have experienced over time people, That's a great point, right? people who don't have the money don't care, um, don't care and have, have made those houses. It's really a matter of, you know, we did a video the other day on um, your attachment to things. And some people have a great attachment well, that's a great to um, houses and where their house is and neighborhoods. Um, we didn't have that attachment. That was not, that was not our driving goal. Yeah, well, the only attachment was you already found the area, the school system. You looked at the crime and the education and all that stuff. You did all, all right. of our homework. We knew the area. We knew the area, but I was never attached to any particular right. home that we no, saw. Right. And um, I came out to visit you for the weekend to house hunt, right? Yeah, well, yeah. It's also it was a time in Colorado where people were moving in there rapidly. Right. So um, I'm there working and I'm working with a realtor. And they said things to me like, hey, Jeffrey, just so you know, when a house comes on the market, I'm going to tell you, you have to move on it right now because they'll sell it the next day. Right. And I'm thinking this is a realtor's like, you know, trickery sales, sales pitch. It's like, okay, whatever. But then I called Karen and after that happened like five times in a row, I said, honey, these guys aren't making this up. People are trying to move to Colorado, specifically Denver. A house goes on the market. It pretty much sells for the asking price or more the next day. So you got to get out right. of here. There were bidding wars on right. everything. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So by the time I actually would get there on Friday, all of the houses that Jeffrey had, you know, told me that would be possibilities were, were already right. under contract right. um, by the end of the week. And right. so there was no point in looking at them. So then we just started driving through neighborhoods. Right. Well, you, you found the, 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 not only the town, the city town, uh, the neighborhoods, like the most desirable neighborhoods, we're driving through the neighborhoods. And this is kind of funny because we're driving through a neighborhood and we're looking at all these homes and I'm kind of getting emotional with Karen saying like, we can't afford this neighborhood. This is ridiculous. Right. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm sharing this openly on this video. I've been a guy that's been in sales my whole life. Um, always stretching, just so you know. I had an argument with my dad about this. He's like, when are you going to stop being such a playboy and save some money? I remember this <laughs> yesterday. He's like, dad... I, I let my lifestyle drive my income, not my income drive my lifestyle. Just, you know, I'm, I'm setting this up so you think, you know, I, I was not in the mode of trying to be frugal or save, but, you know, I, but I like that. I'm being smart about things right. I like to think. This right. was definitely above our means. We actually, I don't want to say snuck into the neighborhood. It's a gated community, and we did follow a car in. I think we had probably been stalking the neighborhood you know, that day as we looked and I was insistent that we were going to look in that neighborhood. Right. And so insistent that Jeffrey and I had some pretty strong words. Right, right. Right. And right. Uh, the words that I remember at the end, I'm sure it was a longer argument. You said, 
we cannot afford this neighborhood. I don't even like you saying that because that's not even my language. Right. I don't even like to say that. I would say something now. I would say something like, you know, I don't want to spend that kind of money on this a house in this neighborhood. Right. We, and I, we can afford it. And to. that would have been a right. very different conversation right. because I may have agreed with you, but at that point in time, you said to me, "We cannot afford this well, neighborhood," and I said, "Jeffrey, we can." not afford not to right. buy now, I this remember neighborhood. That. And by the way, I'll just say right now, Karen was right about the neighborhood and where we were going. It's just you have these conversations and, and sometimes it's banter back and forth and whether it's uh, correct or not, you have these discussions in a relationship, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, this we argue here and there. If you are not arguing with your partner, you're not communicating because you're two people coming with different visions and opinions sometimes. And in this particular case, I had so manifested the house like the two previous that when I walked in all three of the homes um, that we ended up purchasing, I immediately told you, this is the one. Oh yeah, yeah, right? you did. So but to, to, to back this up, so then we said, okay, I said, all right, great. Um, Karen had to go back to Chicago, to Lake Forest, because kids had school. And you know, I went back. Uh, back with her, but then back to Denver. So I continued this house hunt. So, you know, what would happen is I was working a full day and uh, at the office, then I could go out and meet the realtor, I don't know, at 6.30 or whatever it was to go look at this house. So uh, to fast forward the story, Karen and I talked about, we had a list, a cul-de-sac, it was in this neighborhood for the school, it was a Tudor home, things like that. Lots of details. I think. Uh, even the pool, the house we left had a pool. There's not a lot of pools. Uh, there weren't a lot of pools in either Chicago or even Denver. In no, the, in not there weren't a lot of pools. There weren't, and I wanted right. a fenced in yard because, yeah. you know, we've always had dogs. The dogs, and, yeah. Um, Jeffrey was working with a realtor, and we had given specific details of what we wanted in the particular districts that we yeah. wanted. And she kept showing Jeffrey houses outside of the parameters that we gave her and we were getting frustrated because we were apart and jeffrey was you know in denver and there i was with our daughters in lake forest illinois and we always have said we're not good apart you know right. Like, so I said that, right? We're better right. together. We're better right. together and yeah. we wanted to be together and i wanted the girls to be with their father and not have them come home friday night and fly out you know sunday yeah. night and so i got pretty um um, disappointed in the realtor that we were using because she insisted on showing me some houses in areas outside of where I wanted to live and I she was very forceful in that and I felt like I was wasting time because here I am with my two young kids flying out there and I've got you know two days before I have to get back and put them back in school and so we ended up choosing another realtor. And I think it's important to know that because you cannot let somebody else dictate your dreams or self-sabotage because you're afraid to hurt right. somebody's Do we family. buy the house from that second realtor? We did. Okay, because right, I was just confused. Because well, the, the deal we cut just for all you realtors right. out there, I, I told the realtor that we were working with who wasn't doing a great job. By the way, I said, hey, here's the deal. Any houses you've showed us, if we buy one of those, obviously you get the commission, we'll do it through you. Absolutely. But we're, we're moving over here now. So, right. um, and I, I just lost track of that. Yeah, that's another piece that we didn't talk about. Right, but so, Anne was our new realtor and she only showed us right. three homes. Yeah, and, and well, by the way, this this house, Right. the, the, the story is, yes. uh, no, there was no realtor there. Uh, I went to go meet with one of the owners of the house. Mm -hmm. So this was after work, I don't know, it was like 6.30 or something like that. So I would go to this house, it's on a cul-de-sac, and it's a Tudor home, and it has a pool, and all and this And it's stuff. in that neighborhood yeah. that we had the argument. It was in the neighborhood we had the argument out there that we couldn't afford, right? It was this neighborhood. So um, we're in there, I'm meeting with uh, the woman of the household. She is there, I don't know the whole story, what's going on, but I found this out as I'm sitting there. So I'm uh, looking at the house, I'm thinking, I think this is gonna be great, this is perfect, it's in the neighborhood. It's um, it's a Tudor home, it's on a cul-de-sac, it's got a pool, we're going through the whole thing. I mean, this is incredible. Um, it's closer to the range that I wanted to spend. 
But the kicker here is I was sitting there in the kitchen and she took a phone call. And it was obviously a very stressful phone call. It was her kids. And I sat there for a minute uh, because, you know, it was awkward, but I kind of walked off a little bit, but I could hear the whole conversation. When she hung up, she said, we already bought another house. We own this house and it's been six or nine months, whatever it's been. And uh, that's my kids wondering when I'm gonna come home and start dinner. My husband's already home. I already told you it's like 6.30, I'm home from the, uh, the uh, I'm at home. I'm looking at this house from the office and obviously her husband's home. The kids are all there home from school, it's late. I could see all this stress and I thought, wow, these guys need to sell this house like yesterday. I mean, I just witnessed this whole thing. They have two homes, it's ridiculous. The poor woman can't be home with her family. So I thought this was the house. So I called Karen up immediately, mm -hmm. said, you gotta come out here. Right. And then I found the house, this is the house. Right. And sure enough, she came out and I mean, it was, yeah. it was about perfect. It, well, right. it was, it was October. I came out and the funny thing is, I'll never forget, we got to the front door and before the door was open, I said, this is the one. And she opened the door about two inches and said, I need about 15 more minutes. Do you remember that? No. I remember the house, she, she wanted to get it a certain way. Oh, okay. All right, okay. Yeah, it was, it was kind of funny in, in a way. Yeah. Anyway, it gave Jeffrey and I a little time to look at the outside, which is really what I fell in love with. Right. It was on a cul-de-sac, it was a Tudor, it was on an acre with a fenced in backyard in a pool. And I had already fallen in love with everything outside. Now, to be perfectly fair, when I opened up the front door, um, I could have easily fallen out of love because the inside just didn't match the well, outside. You had to tweak some things, right. but that's not it. So we, yeah. but Jeffrey and I knew that those were the easy things to fix. Right. You cannot pick a house up and put it in a different location. Right. Right. You can't take a house on right. a busy street and put it right. into a cul-de-sac. Right. In addition, you can't take a house in a neighborhood like that you know, and plunk it down into a, right. another neighborhood. Right. So it was really, um, we manifested that house and the fact that she really wanted to sell it. And the house had been on the market for quite some time. Yeah, we just didn't know about it with the other realtors. Well, so. it had actually gotten substantially reduced, oh, which okay, is why we right. hadn't looked at it. Right. Uh, and I'm talking about well, substantially reduced. Well, let's, let's go through this. So right. um, we, we picked, the perfect neighborhood. We knew about the perfect house. Mm -hmm. We knew where it was. It was in a, it was in a stretch neighborhood for us, um, clearly. And um, we manifested because once Karen and I had the discussion, I said, she's right. This is the neighborhood right. we wanna be in. This is where we need to be. I'll make it work. So we had the idea about it. Came upon this house, cul-de-sac, Tudor house, pool, Great yard, big yard, fenced in. Most stand. important, the right school district. It's right school um, district. Where our kids could actually walk to school, which was yeah. amazing that they would be able to do that or ride their bikes to school. That was really important for me because right. I wanted them to be kids. Right. Right? So it's all those things that she wanted, um, drastically reduced in the final hour just because of this situation. They had to sell the house right. because they had to move into the other house. So. Everything lined up perfectly. The universe delivered this, and obviously, we pulled the trigger and bought the house mm -hmm. and lived happily ever after. That was a great ending, right? Perfect. It, it was a great ending. We so, actually sold that house in 2000. Well, just not too long ago. Yeah, about three years ago um, after living in it and raising our family in it. Yeah, it had such yeah. great vibes. So, we it sold did. it pretty easily, and I. I um, yeah, and that was that was another great story selling that house, but that's a story for another day. Another that's video. That's a story for another day. We got lots of stories for you. But remember that location is super important, and you should always buy a house in an area that is easier to resell because you just right. don't know where life is going to take you, and if you're going right. to stay in that house forever. Think about that in the back yeah. of your mind. But also, but as we always say in manifesting things, a know exactly what you want, write right. down the list of things. By the way, if you have 20 things on a list and 15 of them are checked out, that's great. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be 20 for 20. Right. So know exactly what you want, right. and if believe you can get it. Oh, sorry. sorry. If you're right. working with a partner and you don't agree on it like we didn't at first, get to a point 
where you do agree because you both well, obviously you can't know exactly what you want if you're not in agreement exactly so yes we, we had the disagreement great clarification right so then we knew exactly what we want we did the list step two is believe you can get there mm -hmm. okay it might be a stretch but guess what you can find a house that's discounted or maybe you just run into uh, luck of the draw I had no doubt in. that we were gonna find right. the perfect house right. just like we had right. in the two previous there was Never a doubt in my mind. I had already visualized it like I do everything that we manifest and all of those bumps in the road There were a couple of other houses we made offers on and they fell through Thank goodness they right, fell through right. right, but at the time right. I thought that was you know a bad thing But it turned out to be a great thing. All right. So the third thing is to Set the intention. So once you figure out what you want believe you can get there set the intention take the action obviously you gotta look at homes in that area and the other part of outer intention, if you believe everything, the universe will bring it to you. So those are the three steps that we followed and we manifested the perfect house. And I would love to hear from everyone else how you have manifested um, your perfect house or your perfect apartment um, or anything that you've manifested. Whatever, a job, a person. Right, or, share these yeah. stories because like I said in the beginning, some people say this is hooey. It is not hooey for those who believe. Well, if you it, think it's hooey, it's like whatever, whatever you said, want it to be, right? If it you, will be. If you think you can, you can. What was it, uh, Henry Ford? I love these uh, these uh, old sayings. I know. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you're all, you're correct there too. Yeah, you're correct. You're correct both ways. If you think right. you can, you're correct. If you think you can't, you're correct. Exactly. Right. All right. Wishing you great health, abundant happiness, and outrageous love from the nest at Copper Mountain. And go ahead and please click off and subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. Thanks.